I'm trying this on a new setting 4k uh, yeah this is Grand Junction Colorado now uh, I'm recording off different dates a pretty big gap uh, if you look on Google Maps, you'll actually see these string of deadhead units kind of up further on the north end of the yard. A lot of times when they don't have uh, enough commerce, not much... Um, good traveling across the country they'll just put these excess engines somewhere kind of out of the way now the time that google picture was taken there must have been 60 or 70 of these down here helper utah has a bunch of them uh, ogden utah has a bunch of these sitting out and they'll just come grab them when they need them. I think the stability on this setting isn't quite as good. So I'm hoping I can even upload this. Oh my god. 2012 I'll be dang God it must have been near a loading dock or something whenever I tagged it there's no way I could get up there I'll be dang that's like one in a million chances I'm surprised I even seen that white Yeah, now everything I put in my videos, like my doctor's procedures and all that news and stuff, that's all really happening, but it's just got different dates of when. Yeah, that was a waste of time. Yeah, I kept telling them doctors, I said, that Miralax stuff and that magnesium citrate are not going to work. They're not going to help clean me out for that procedure. And plus, on top of that, they didn't tell me what time of day the procedure was going to be until the day before at 4 p.m. And trying to arrange for a ride to Greenville, that's almost impossible at the last minute. So yeah, they messed that up, so they rescheduled it for December 7th. Yeah, I checked one of these last night on the very end, and it was open. It was unlocked. Boy, I remember the first time I came through here, about 1991, I guess. Well, back then, it was real grand railroad. And you could actually go to Pueblo out of here through... Tennessee Pass and you follow the Arkansas River that beautiful canyon it's probably one of the most nice rides that existed but that line is abandoned now just right up here is where the split is used to could go to Pueblo that way across the Rocky Mountains and Tennessee Pass Tunnel was like about two miles long or you go left and go to Denver, but you go through the Moffat Tunnel. And I think that one's like 6.8 6 or something like that miles long. And the Colorado River is just right on the other side of the road over there. 
Let me show you how far I can zoom in on this setting. See the bluffs over there. Yeah, it's pretty much high desert in Grand Junction. I think it's around 5,500 foot elevation here. Used to have some really good camps. Now I noticed the old catch out there. They built a brand new jail here. A huge complex. And from what I heard, that that's already full. But it's there's a walk bridge down there, and the jail's just to the right of the main line. Yeah, I think that's the walk bridge. But there's a huge jail down there on the right. That used to be where I. I caught out. There used to be a park down there too, and I don't see it anymore. And I think uh, this overpass up here is brand new, also. Yeah, I remember my first ride, me and four or five other guys in Pueblo. I was still real green. And we went and scrounged up all our food, got all our water, got down there, and a bull came up, big old cowboy hat. And one of my good friends out of that bunch of guys, he, of course, asked for all our ID, ran them. And uh, it was my birthday that day. And that one guy we were riding with, it was his birthday. And it ended up being the bull's birthday too, so it was kind of a weird coincidence. I think I've actually told that story before. It was the bull's birthday, my birthday, and that other rider's birthday. So he was a little bit more lenient on it. Yeah, I checked that one last night, it was open. Uh, sleep in there tonight. Yeah, split just right up here. So any traffic you got going over here, it's all coal. Now the line's still open on the split. It goes out probably 50 or 60 miles to some coal mines where they go get the coal. Then there's another little split out that way. It just goes to another coal mine. But we'll go up here to the main split where you go off to Denver. Check out these yard dogs. These are yard switch engines. I've seen these in Fort Worth too. The only two places. These really heavy duty extra big switch engines. Check that out. I'm not sure the size of the engine, but the fuel tank's like twice as big as a normal switch engine. You can leave in the comments if you know any more information about these big switch engines. It's neat, when you hear them running, they don't even sound like a regular switch engine. They just sound like a road engine. Yeah, I imagine North Little Rock has some of these big ones now. Yeah, they got these sitting off on a separate track too. And I believe these are remote controlled as well. There's a guy that stands out with a big, like, harness around his neck and he's got a controller in his arms that helps hold it up and it's got like a little joystick and some buttons on it he controls them engines I'm sure they have other ways to do it too but <sighs> I have not seen one person yet yeah look up top you can see that like receiver that receives the signal. 
Alright, we'll walk up here. Do the split. Now, uh... Yeah, I'm wondering about that engine that had my tag on it. I'm trying to think where that was. Where that engine was when I tagged it. It's 2012, so 10 years ago. Uh, shoot, I can't think of where that would have been. I'm trying to think of somewhere that would have had a ledge or a dock that would have allowed me to tag that high. Uh, Pocatello, for some reason, that's ringing a bell. It could have been in Pocatello where I hit it. Uh, mm, no, it wouldn't have been Pasco. I don't know, it could have been Pasco too. They got some UP in there. Like the stuff that runs down to Lewiston, down the Snake River. Man, I'm gonna get that on video eventually. You gotta catch out of Pasco and go down to Lewiston. Or just go down to Lewiston and ride it back. That's what I did. I had hitched out of Coeur d'Alene. Went down. And there's like a world-renowned hill. Lewiston Hill, I believe they call it. And it's like cliff walls all on one side. Coming down into Lewiston. Lewiston Hump, Lewiston Hill, Lewiston Cliff or something. It's like one of the top 10 most dangerous roads in that area. Yeah, now last night there weren't any yard lights on at all. Don't see that often. Even in yards that are abandoned, the lights will stay on. Now the reason they even have a yard here is because back in the day when they went to Denver to the left or they went to Rio Grande to the right trains coming in from Salt Lake had had freight from uh, that was going to Pueblo and Denver so they just hooked them on one train and split them up when they got to this yard that's why they have this yard here that way when trains came in with Denver and Pueblo freight on it they would classify them here and then make up a train with only the Pueblo cars going to Pueblo and the Denver going to Denver but since nothing goes to Pueblo out of here anymore they just run straight through they just use it for storage the tracks that are maintained they sure don't keep them all maintained there's no reason Yeah, I used to have a really good camp right up here. Here's the split. You go that way to Pueblo, or you did go to Pueblo that way. Now, the main line is over here, UP. There's yeah, some BNSF, too, that comes in here. But it all goes to Denver through Moffett tunnel I think that one town's called Glenwood Springs yeah I'm sure they had some shops here at one time yeah I think this overpass here is the new one it was an older one I think they just put four lane overpass in instead of a two lane like it was Tulane uh, Hospital in New Orleans. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I haven't seen a cloud in the sky since I've been here. I remember me and a guy caught out of Denver once, and we probably had three 12 packs of beer each, and I had already drank all my beer up. 
we got here about four in the morning and train come in the crew change we get off right in there somewhere and he he saved a lot of his beer so he was pretty roasted by the time we got here and oh man when it got daylight man we were covered with dirt it finally got daylight and he he just had a little day bag he was like man how did my backpack and clothes get so messed up plus being hot you sweat inside that it was a canadian double barrel grainer we were in i had one compartment he had the other through the other hole i didn't get that bad dirty tore up man he was covered because you're sitting there sweating with all that dirt blowing around man it looked like looked like he had one of them generic suntan you get the suntan office or bed yeah there's a abandoned little building there door open but I haven't seen any traffic here yet I hadn't even seen any trains moving now we're getting on the main line here see how the tracks kind of lean into the left it's kind of on a, a curve that's one of the we call them the higher speed curves because they're usually doing about 30 miles an hour when they come around that corner so they lean that that way gravity pushes down equal on the train as it goes around the curve so the higher pitch you see in the track the higher speed the train normally goes through there some of them are pitched pretty high so if your train ever goes into an emergency and stops on that uh that tilt like that and you're say you have a box car that's loaded more on one side that's pretty dangerous tip over i've seen one go into an emergency one time it was a insulated box car with a reefer unit on it it had fuel it had gas coming out where you put the gas in it was leaning so far but usually when they load them there's really specific strict rules on how to load them you can't load them higher than a certain line you got to weigh them equally on each side uh, finally some shade <laughs> yeah I'm pretty sure this is a different overpass Yeah, you can get out that way, but you have to hop a bunch of junk. Oh, I wish I could stop this camera and go over there to the river. But this is kind of a test video and an update video anyway. Everybody's telling me it's probably going to take longer to upload. So I gotta find some good Wi-Fi. I got data on this phone now, but it would just eat that up. It's unlimited data that I have, but when you consume a certain amount, I mean, you still got data that's good for texting, but you can't even watch YouTube videos without it buffering 313 million times. Yeah, the Rocky Mountains are that way. This going towards Denver.